Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new here. Today we are doing another step-by-step -step acrylic painting tutorial of this painting that you can see right beside me. I call this one the little girl without a reflection. In my series of paintings, I've done a series of four of these personally, not necessarily in tutorials, but this is the second one in that series. I'll take you through some basics of acrylic painting. This one's more impressionistic as you can see here. I hope that you can learn something that you can take onto your own practices. If you haven't checked out my other step-by-step -step acrylic painting tutorials, I'll link that playlist below for you to check out as well. Let's jump right into this one. All right, here we got our canvas. I've got a few brushes. You can see the three paints that we are gonna be using today. And you can see that they're all Liquitex basics. I find that this to be a very good um, student grade or just learning grade paint. It's what I use in my paint by number kits that I create. And yeah, they're very affordable, but they're still a good quality, I find. I've got my mason jar here. I like to keep my water in a mason jar. It has a lid so I can close it off if I need to. For rags, I like to use just old clothes that I cut up, you know, be a little bit environmentally friendly. And we've got three brushes here that I'm gonna use. We got a nice big flat brush. This is size 14, it's about one inch across. We got a smaller filbert brush, number two, and then we got an angular brush, um, number four there. So I'm probably just going to be using these three brushes, maybe for the really thin tree branches that you see we are going to use, maybe even a thinner brush as well. I've got a little ruler here and a little pencil. Just going to do a little bit of a measurement here. You can do this one on an 8x10 canvas and do these same measurements. You can do it. This is a 9x12 and so it's just slightly um, bigger than the original one that I had done this on. And so what we're going to do is, you probably heard of the rule of thirds, I want the ground or that horizon line to be a third of the way up, and then that's really the main one that I'm going for here, so if I've got 12 inches here, a third of the way up is going to be um, about four. I'm going to go just slightly less, I feel like that's going to be too high if I go for so I'm going three and a half and we're gonna go across there I do have a longer ruler my daughter just drew all over it and so it's hard to see the measurements and really that's just all I want to make sure I know for now the rest of it we can kind of just go with it as it is so this one we're just really going to be using three colors which is awesome a nice really simple one i'm going to put some black down on my palette here now when you're using black um, black is a very powerful color <laughs> if you want to call it a color some people just call it a tint or a shade and so you do want to be careful when you are using your black to not not use it too heavily to start with just add a little bit of add a little bit as a t at a time as you're going through. So we're going to start with our background and work our way to our foreground. And for this here, I'm going to use this larger brush. We're going to do this top background, then we're going to do kind of that little reflection there in in the bottom here. So for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load my brush up with some of this white. Okay? So I put down some titanium white and I'm actually going to do horizontal brush strokes here. Okay, now you can't really see much, so I'm going to get a little bit on the side there of that brush, and you can see just how quickly that changes the color of, well, especially white, right? But I do want the top part of my painting to be the darker part, so I'm going to get some black going here, just filling this in. Now the nice thing about this background is we don't want it to be perfectly blended. We want some streaks of darker going in there, so I'm going to add a little bit of darker going in there, and I'm going to start moving my way down here. So what, what you want to do is you want to just get a little bit on your brush as you're going through. Do a few strokes left to right. That's going to change that color a bit in there, right? Make enough of a change that it's noticeable. And then you keep on working your way down. 
as we get closer to our horizon line, which we did draw on here originally, I'm going to want this background to start getting a little bit lighter. So I'm just making sure this canvas was actually pretty rough. I probably should have sanded it beforehand. It's just getting in all those grooves. It can be a little bit challenging sometimes. Feel like it's too gray in spots grab a little bit of white go back in add a little bit of white into certain spots there and i'm just going to do the same thing all the way down and just as we go down again i'm just going to get lighter and lighter using more white more white until i get to the horizon line there Okay, I've got to the bottom. I feel like I need a little bit more white out here. I'm definitely going to need more for later, so it's okay if I put a little bit out there. I just feel like this bottom part needs a little bit more. There we go. That's making me a little bit happier. And then we've got a little mountain that we're going to be adding here. So I'm going to mix this in a little bit to create a, a little bit of a gray. And this mountain is going to be starting down over here. Coming up here, to a peak, coming down off right there. Now this mountain isn't going to be really detailed at all. I'm going to add a little bit of shading into it. just to make it stand out just a little bit more than what it is. So these, I want these back peaks. I guess it's just one peak, but the back side of the mountain here to be a little bit darker. So I'm just adding some more black to this white. Maybe it's got a little bit of white right on top there. Ah, uh, no. Let's make this darker here so it's more distinguishable. That's all your mountain really needs to be. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. There we go. And that's all we're going to do for it. Just make sure that we're covering down to that horizon line that we wanted to make in there beforehand. Okay, and we're good. Alright, that's all we're doing for the background. Nice and simple, little abstract in there, and then working our way down. Sorry, I just see a spot here that needed to be filled a little bit. Again, as I said, this canvas is very, uh, very coarse. And so getting all the little pores filled in, in between, uh, is, I should have sanded it beforehand. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to take red. Now, I guess I haven't said this yet, but technically you could choose any color at this point and do the painting with that color. You know, maybe you want to do it with pink. Pink would actually look pretty cool. Maybe I maybe I should try it with that. Maybe you want to do it with purple instead. Um, you know, you could choose any color at this point and and work with it. 
I'm actually tempting myself to maybe try a different color. Like maybe purple would look pretty cool. Um, even pink would look pretty cool. Magenta, I've got some magenta here, right? That would be pretty awesome. Maybe we'll do more of these <laughs> afterwards. I'm, I'm uh, second guessing myself here. Oh, okay, well, we'll stick with red. That's what we planned with. That's what we'll, that's what we'll go with. So I'm just going to put some red down here. I'm using pyro red. You can really use any kind of red. I think the first time that I used this, I used a cadmium red. Um, just a, a medium, not not the deep. The deep is, is pretty dark. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to use this same brush. I'm not going to clean it off right now. I'm just going to take some of this red that I've got out. And you want to make sure now that your brush strokes are vertical, right? For this we were doing horizontal, that's why it was creating that nice looking sky for us. But now in this reflection part, we want this to be more vertical. So I'm going to take a little bit of white on there as well. And I'm just going to brush a little bit of that in. I'm going to grab a little bit of black. Brush some of that in. Okay. Now again, notice that I didn't brush over the same spot with the white and the black like over and over and over right I, I just did a couple and the reason being is I wanted it to leave those streaks like that I'm gonna go back in and adjust it here in a minute I'm just gonna add in kind of a layer of red moving down here don't worry too much about making sure that this is all lined up we're gonna add the black ground to it as well and that's going to help us create that more even um, horizon there. This bottle's almost out. I wonder if I got any more in. Oh yeah, we're good. We are good. All right, it's going to go in here. Keep on working with this. So as you're doing this part here, I just decided to do a little time lapse. Just make sure the brush strokes are continuing to be top to bottom or bottom to top. I filled the whole thing with red and now I'm going back in with whites and you want it to blend in with each other. That's so why I'm just getting some white going down, going up, getting some black now going down, going up. Some of that's going to turn to gray and that's totally fine. That's the mixtures that we want to get as we're going through this. If you want to add a little bit of bright red back on top at, at the end, that's what I did here just to make sure that I still had some nice bright reds in there as well. Okay, once you feel like you got that kind of where you want it, that's good. I am going to just wipe this off. I'm not going to worry about rinsing it right now. Maybe, yeah, we'll just wipe this off. I'm just going to be using some black here. And it's not a big deal if it mixes with the red and stuff that's in there, but there was quite a bit on there. So now I'm going to take my black. If you really want to at this point to get a really, really straight horizon line, you can use painter's tape. Um, just make sure that your paint is dry underneath first before you apply that painter's tape. Um, for the sake of the tutorial here, I'm just going to go in and add it in here. Now our ground doesn't need to be super thick we are going to add things on top of it right and we're going to add a little bit of almost like uh, grass as well you just want to make sure that you are covering evenly across there we go and if you on the bottom part if it starts blending in with the white and the red and stuff underneath that is completely fine because that's going to look more like a, a reflection of the ground going in there so don't worry too much about that if that's going to start blending for you if you feel like it's not black enough let it dry add another layer over top and you're going to be just fine okay i'm going to actually wipe this one off i think i'm good with it for now
I always give my brushes a nice clean afterwards when I'm done. This just kind of ties them by for now. All right, now we're gonna move into our tree. So for our tree, I'm gonna grab this little angular brush. You could use a larger one um, if you'd like. You don't have to use this. If you, you really could use the brush we were just using, but once we get up a little bit higher into some of these branches, I didn't really feel like having to mess around with that. So our tree is gonna start down in this corner here, right in about there. And I'm just gonna do an outline here quick and then I'll go in and fill it in. If your paint up top isn't dry yet, some of this stuff isn't dry yet, it will blend a little bit with it, but we don't worry too much about that. A lot of the top part of the tree is going to be covered up anyways, and so don't feel like you need to do a ton of detail in the top of the branches. We're going to work, as you probably saw in the main image, and, well, as you can see in the main image, I guess I should say, that you, we are going to do some more detail in the bottom part here. The other side of the tree trunk is going to be curving up from the other way. I appreciate you joining me here today. I hope you're a subscriber to my channel as we're going to have a lot more fun in the weeks to come here. If you haven't seen this painting on my website before, I do have one that I've done, and it's part of a series of paintings actually that I called um, The Girl Without a Reflection. And so in the originals, and I'm, pl I'm planning to continue to do that here with you today, the little girl that we paint isn't going to have a reflection. And in each of the paintings in that series, I actually do use a different color. I started with blue, and then we have red, and then we had green, and then we had yellow. And those were the, the four colors that I have used with this. And then in each of them, actually the girl ends up moving spots. So in the first one, um, she's on the swing. And then as the story progresses, then she moves around. And so you can see with this one, now she's blowing a dandelion flower, maybe making a wish. And then in the green one, she's sitting against the fence. And then in the yellow one, the girl's actually just gone. It's just an empty swing. And it's one of those things where people can interpret it as they wish. I'm not saying there's a right or a wrong answer to any interpretations, but I did it quite early in my, you could say my painting career exploring with simple palettes, right? We just got three colors that we're using here. Nothing complex, and so exploring with something simple. So the tree is going to go right up to the top here and actually it kind of goes off the page but again you don't need to worry much about the detail past kind of this point right in here.
it's going to make this part just slightly wider. Okay, and our actual branch where the swing is going to come off of it's going to come up right here. And it's going to come out a ways, this one. This is the part where if you want to grab a thinner brush, totally feel free to. I'm just kind of going for it with this one here. Okay, once you feel like you have your tree blocked in, then we're going to add a little bit of detail to this tree. And all we're going to do for that de detail is just a little bit of shading. So it's as if our light is coming from the right. And so we're going to make the right side of the tree have a little bit of um, light coming on it. And what we're going to do to do that is just take some grays and work around with our grays. So here I just mixed with the white and the black, just a darker gray. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of that in here, focusing this dark gray kind of on a little bit of the left, more towards the middle, working it into the right side. I wanna leave the very left side black. Then I'm gonna do the same on these branches here. Now again, don't worry about going too, too high because not all the branches are going to be seen. Okay, now I'm going to grab a little bit of white, make that a lighter gray than what it was that we were just working with. And now I'm going to focus mainly on the right side. And I'm not going to blend the whole thing, right? Like I'm going to go in here and add. few streaks going back in to the tree a little bit there as well not blending the whole thing because that will kind of take away from some of the texture that we're adding into this one here now I'm going to take mainly white here we're making a really light gray and I'm just going to go in in a few spots just to add extra light highlights. Okay, these are just extra light highlights I'm going in here with now. And that's just gonna make our tree look a bit more realistic.
Now while I'm at it, we're actually going to do, do that same idea here with the ground, but a little bit less of a scale here. I'm just going to take a little bit of this dark gray and just brush some of it lightly into our ground here. Take some of this even lighter stuff. It didn't seem that much lighter. And just add a little bit of that into that ground there too. And that's just adding a little bit of texture in there for us. Once you feel like you got your tree shaded how you want it, and just overall how you want your tree. I'm going to call it good with this brush for now. Probably come back and use this one later. Now we're going to move into the actual leaves of the tree. That's where I'm going to grab this filbert brush. You can see it's nice and rounded on the top there and it's just giving us some nice uh, I don't know what to say <laughs> it's spaced out nice it's not flat it's it, it's good so first I'm gonna take this with just black pure black and notice that I'm getting the top of it um, loaded with paint right I've got it vertical here because we're gonna keep that vertical position and I'm just gonna go in and start dabbing in this black. Now things don't need to be necessarily like completely covered because we're going to go in with a few different layers here but I do want to go in and lay a pretty solid foundation of darker up in the top left and just where the, the, where the uh, leaves are going to be a bit more heavy and then afterwards I'm going to go in with other colors. So I'm literally just loading up the top of that brush and going in and dabbing this in here. So I'm just going to do a little time lapse again here, continue on. I'm going to do it with black and then I'll pause again when I'm going to switch colors. Okay, once you feel like you have enough black in there, it's going to bring some black over here. And I guess if you want, actually, at this point, you could grab a palette knife. It's going to take some white. It's going to make some dark gray in there. And we're going to go in and do that same thing. Now again, or not again, <laughs> well, kind of again. You don't want to cover up all the black of what we just did. That's the whole point of doing layers, right? You want to go through, make sure that you can see still what is going on underneath. And so this is just going to be complementing what we've already done. I should add some more over here. I'm going to take one more round of grays. I feel like I need a little bit more white out here. The white thing is just nasty. I need to clean that off. It's 
just a bit of a lighter gray again and I'm just gonna add this into a few spots not everywhere am I gonna do this lighter gray just spots where I think things would be a little bit lighter <laughs> gonna leave this back corner almost untouched there really just went for a few other places as you can see okay now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the red and as we start mixing this red in you're gonna see that it's gonna mix in with those darker colors and that's okay especially in this back corner it's kind of what I want it to do actually I want it to be a bit darker a bit faded back here and then as we get closer to the front here I want it to get a little bit brighter again And especially these front branches, I want those to be nice and bright. Okay, and then I'm going to grab some white. I'm going to go in in a few of these spots here. And these are kind of going to create more depth into our tree. And also create a little bit of shadow throughout as well. So I'm kind of choosing where these branches are coming in and out. Right. If you feel like any spots are too light and you don't have you want it to be darker you can always just go back and grab some black and add a few black or darker blotches back in right Okay, once your tree, you feel like your tree is done, take this brush and wash it off. That's all we're going to use this brush for. Just use and abuse the filbert brushes. I always use those for dabbing, things like that. All right, now we're going to do the swing. Okay, now to do the swing, there's a few different ways you can do it. You can take a really fine brush. I actually have a brush here. Let me show you if you can call it a brush. Oh, sorry, I just bumped the camera. Sorry about that. Um, it has one hair on it, one single hair. Now, I recently finished a painting, and I used this for the hair in the painting of a person. It was quite the job. I'm not going to use that here. I want to show you some other ways that you can do this. You can just, you can see how I used this brush to make those lines. You can do that as well and that will turn out just fine. The other way that you can do it is if you have a palette knife, right? I've got a palette knife with a really fine edge. I can get a little bit of black on this and carve those lines down. Okay. There's a lot of different ways. You could take some painter's tape and create a fine line and do that same thing so then it's nice and straight as well. You could take a ruler, put a ruler down, and kind of paint along the ruler to make it nice and straight. 
I'm going to use the palette knife here. I haven't done this for a while, so I'm interested to see how it goes here. Hopefully my palette knife is uh, straight. And we're just going to pick the spot here. And it's not like we're going for realism here, so if, you know, the swing gets slightly bigger in one spot, like the, the rope gets slightly bigger in one spot, it's not going to be the end of the world. Okay, that actually worked pretty good. I'm impressed with that. Just gonna wipe off that palette knife there. Now for the bottom, I will use this angular brush that we were using before. And I'll just connect those two lines and I'm gonna go slightly past on each side. So as if the swing is kind of tied to the bottom there. Now I'm also going to go in and add our fence posts. So they're going to start, well, roughly a third, right? We got nine here, so about three inches in. So I want these to start roughly about here. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. That rule of thirds can just be followed somewhat generally. And we're going to have another post right here. And another post right there. Now again, if you really wanted to make these super straight, you can. But I'm going to say that this fence line is made from wood that it was just kind of harvested. Maybe it was deadfall. It wasn't really cut properly. And so if there's some irregularities in it, that's totally fine. There we go. Got our little fence line in there. Now the th two things that we're going to add reflections for. Are, well, <laughs> see now I'm second guessing myself again. In the original, I made reflections of the tree and the fence line. Ah, yeah, let's do it. Why not? So our fence line, it's going to come this way a little bit and up. By adding these reflections in there, it is showing a bit more that this is water. Okay. If you don't want to add the reflections, you don't have to. Definitely don't have to. That's that's something I love about art. Is it's it's very subjective. Sometimes I don't like that. But at the same time I do. Because I can do what I like and you can do what you like, and we can both be happy with it. I'm sure I'm gonna get comments on there saying, Why are there reflections of the fence in the tree and not the girl? Well, that's the point of the artwork here. That's what we're going for, right? There's not a reflection of the swing either. Do I really care about that? No, not really. So our, fit, our tree here, just gonna follow the curve of the tree. That it has here, as best I can. I'm just using black for this, remember. I'm not using anything fancy. Maybe we'll have it branch out right here. We got it coming in right here. So 
just blocking this in. Now if you don't want this reflection to be quite as solid, take a little bit of red and brush a little bit of red into it. That'll tone down that reflection. And actually add kind of a neat dimension to it. There we go. If you wanted to add some red into there, you could do that as well. Just gonna rinse this. Okay, and lastly, we're gonna be on to the little girl. So you can t feel free to take a look at the few different renditions of this one that I've done. If you wanna put the girl on the swing, feel free to put her on the swing. If you wanna put her on the ground, like I'm gonna do here, feel free to do that. If you wanna put her sitting against the fence post like I've done in the past, you can do that. Or if you don't want to put her in at all, you don't have to, okay? So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna use this brush still, this angular brush. She's gonna be sitting right in here. Now, I want her head and her hair to kind of come up here. She's just small, she's not very, not very big. be kneeling on the ground here and again we're not going for crazy realism here she's got a little bow tied to the back she's kneeling down here Can add a little bit more texture to that hair. Be her feet just sticking out the back. And there we go. She's blowing that little dandelion. Once you feel like you got the little girl how you want it, then we can go in here and you can, well, here you can adjust anything if you feel like you need to add, adjust anything on the tree, on the branches or anything. If you feel like you got that how you want it, our last step that we're gonna do here is just sign our painting. So I'm just taking some red here and some black, just making a nice dark red, maybe take a hint of white just to lighten things up a little bit there. And I'm going to sign my painting here. You can sign it however you like. You don't have to sign it at all, I guess, if you don't want to. I often just sign paintings with my last name and then the year that I painted it. And so to do that, I'm just going to go in here. And I guess what I should say is I often do that with colors I've been using in the painting. So this one, I'm just going to be using a darker red. 
and I'm actually going to switch brushes here. I usually use, that was close. No, where is that brush? There it is. Usually using one of these, just a nice liner brush. Very small. And for the year, I often just do a little apostrophe. And right now it's 2024, so just a little 24 in there. All right. And there you go. If you want to paint the edges as well, you know, feel free to paint those edges. Oftentimes I'll just paint edges a very dark dominant color of the painting so this one would just be black and that kind of frames it in nicely for you already so you don't need to do anything else with it. I've done things dark green, dark brown, dark blues, light blues depending on the painting. Um, you can you can do with it with the edges as you will. So on the back of it as well if you've done this tutorial with me all the way through you're still here I'd appreciate if you sent me a photo I'd love to see your final results see what you did with the little girl there if you put her there or somewhere else maybe in the story behind that. Um, if you haven't checked out my other tutorials I, that playlist is linked below along with all the materials I used in this um, demonstration here in this step by step. So you can check all those out as well. Thank you for joining me here. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did making it. We'll see you next time here on Brian Sloan Artist.